this is a table. Um, a, a table is a little special function of Excel. It, it, it's not simply ranges, but it's a table. And the way this table was created was through the insert menu, insert table. And once you create it, it's given a name. The name I gave it would be in here called survey. So if I click on survey, you'll see the table is highlighted. And tables have special properties. Uh, you can refer to them by name. The ranges have also automatically are generated with names. Um, my memory's a little fuzzy on how to do the ranges, but I had no problem with the, the overall table, but I had some difficulty using the range names here with the, uh, with the table definition. So you'll see that I actually had to do some uh, uh, reference to the cells the way we normally do it as ranges rather than as range names. So you'll have to excuse me for that. But down here at the bottom, um, I have a number Actually, let me let me start back here at this. This this is the table I want. Survey. Oh, it's going to a different sheet. Oh, I don't want that. I want to stay on this one here. So this is this is the one we want. So at the bottom here, uh, the initial analysis was just to get a count of how many were very likely, likely, unlikely. And um, how many were classmates and how many were others? So you have the data and let's throw it out to the class. How would I determine how many are very likely? What function might you use for that? Class? Just filter the table and the likely reply thing. Okay, you can filter the table. So under reply, we are going to filter, unfilter, select all, it would be very likely. And then we have filtered, and then what we would need would be a what? Um, after, after we did that, what would we need after that? What function? Uh, if you select down that column, from the top to the bottom, it'll display it down in the status bar. Okay, what John is referring to is if I click, because it's a table, if I click in this little drop down here, I didn't do it. Why didn't it do it? Oh, it did it. It's over oh, on the right. You want you deselected. No, that's not why. I have um I have yeah, well it showed count oh, equals twenty-eight in I the status it. bar. No, that that's my that's my doing. That's not no, the table. In the status bar, if you select all the stuff in that column that says oh, very likely. Oh, I know, I, I know what you're talking about, John. Okay, all right. That that yeah, okay, yeah. We do we do many things brute brute force, and that what he's referring, what John referred to, is held down here. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's a very likely, and then. What's another way we could do this? What's this background noise I'm hearing? That's Andy. I'm going oh. to mute him again. Thank you. Um, that's one way to do it, but then I would have to do it for likely. Would I not? Yeah, I'd have to do it for likely. So I would filter, like un uncheck, very likely, filter for likely. Okay, and then I'd highlight again, and this time I would do a count. Fred, how about inserting a pivot table? <laughs> you can do that, but if you just do an if test, some if. Now we're talking, now we're talking, now we're talking. This is what I want you to think about. Different ways to do it. I'm not going to do a pivot table tonight. All I need is a some if, if we take a look or a count if, as, as the case may be, a count if, and that's what this function is in here, count if, and because it's a table, 
it automatically did put in the name of the range, the reply range. Count if reply is the range, comma, the criteria is in C102. I could have put that in quotes, but if you look at C102, I put in the words very likely. So count if is the function that I use, and it's acting on the, the range reply, and it's matching very likely. So that, that's what I actually did. And likely, same thing. Likely, if I double click on that, it's just, um, I, I guess this, this table is called survey three. I don't know how I jumped to survey, survey three, but it's the range of reply and it's getting the criteria from C103, which is likely. So that's how, that's how I do the count. Okay, so we, we suggested uh, filtering and then just doing a, uh, a look-see down at the bottom of the, on the uh, uh, status bar to do a count. Um, and, and Andy wants to do a pivot table. Um, not going to do a pivot table tonight. What I did wind up doing was a count if. Okay. Questions, comments. That's how I would have done it. Okay. Yeah. All right. You have the data. You want to do it. <laughs> you got the data. Do it. It's a what, right to count if formula. Yeah, I, I can't see what you're doing, but I trust you're doing what you're doing. So I'm not doing anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, the unlikelies, um, I also did a count if. How can the number in column E be less than? the number of very likely? Uh, column E is the uh, participants, uh, uh, attendees. And... Um, yeah, you got 28 who say they're coming, plus, and they're, and they're plus one or more. I think we have a filter on. We have a filter on. Let me take the filter off. Okay. The fil a filter was on, John. Okay. Okay, so column column E, column E is is a in, in a in a um, table when you do a sum, you really should do a subtotal if you do filter it because the subtotal um, will recognize your your criterion uh, ra rather than if you do a sum. If you do a sum, you're going to always get the the grand total. You don't want the grand total, so you do a subtotal. The first argument, the 109, stands for sum, and the number um, is the reference to that that um, uh, that that column. That's the field name num number. Yeah, but it, uh, Fred, wouldn't wouldn't if you just did a sum of that, wouldn't that come out to 63 too? Because no, you got let's, zeros. Let's, let's let's try that, but. Um, it's really okay. And How about alt equals. Pardon me. Just oh, do yeah, alt yeah, equals. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll do, I'll do the alt equal. I'm having trouble seeing the keyboard, so alt equals just as bad as anything else. Okay. When I do alt equal, I get the subtotal anyhow. You get the same number. But you get the subtotal. Oh, okay. You do not get the sum. If if you want the sum, um, the problem with the sum with this, you always get the global amount. And when you start to filter the table, uh, I think that's going to give you the global amount and not your total of whatever you filtered it for. So the proper function when you have a table is to use the subtotal. The 109, this argument will give you the sum. Hey, Fred. It, Change yes. that argument from 109 to a simple nine. Okay, and I forget what the difference is. It has something to do with hidden cells and all that nonsense, but that's what it did when I just did it. So yeah, you're going to get the same thing in this case, but it has to do if if you quickly Google somebody wants to Google what the difference is between nine versus 109, 
I honestly get confused. It has something to do with hidden cells. You want to quickly look it up? Google it. Somebody ding it. Fred, in, in column E, do you want the number of the total number of people who will attend by the category very no. likely? No, 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 no. Uh, that, that's automatically going to be very likely and likely. The unlikely is all at zeros. It, it's not by category. I, you know, uh, this this is uh, this is the initial uh, survey. The very likely and likely has become just one category. We don't care if they're very likely or likely as long as, long as they were going to come. Anybody look up the difference between nine and one oh nine? Um, no, sorry. I just put it in chat. And verbally, what's the difference? Uh, let's see, formulas. First formula includes values in hidden rows, while the second yeah. formula only includes values in visible rows. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that that's been a gotcha for me. You know, if you, if you start messing up and hiding rows and columns with with tables, and then you do functions, it, it really messes things up. So nine and one hundred nine are the same here because I don't have any hidden rows. I knew it had something to do with hidden rows, and I don't know which was which. But thank you, Bob. And I always use the I always use the single digit because I always want to include I don't care if it's hidden or not I want to include it. Um, there have been instances where I where I, I use the um, the one that excludes the hidden because I purposely hide them, um, and there were some cases where I hid some some rows or some columns. I got into trouble with that, to be honest with you. You start seeing numbers that didn't make any sense. So I, I would be very, very careful uh, in general when you start to hide. You really got to know what you're doing. If you're hiding rows or columns, especially with a spreadsheet, because you forget you forget what you did. You forget if you, if you hid something that it's been hidden, and then you see numbers and you cross-check it ver visually, uh, and, and then you you get the um, function and they're two different numbers. So I, I'd be very cautious about hiding rows and commas. You really, really know what you're doing. 